What's up, y'all? Welcome back to a brand new video. This is episode 15 in my series where I'm going through other people's favorite movies and I am rating them uh, their top 10 on a scale of 1 to 10 for a total of 100. Like I said, this is episode 15. The last episode, which I literally just got done recording and then hit record for this one, was Mr. Dalen Wynn, one of my good friends. And now we're finishing out the squad here with Mr. Marley Scott. Shout out, Marley Scott. Um, and We'll be rounding out the squad. We'll see how he fares against the other boys. We had Dalen with an 87, which put him in third place overall. Um, Hayden and Edmund both tied with an 83 and a half, which is putting them right towards the middle. And then we have Aaron with an 80 and a half, which is towards the bottom half, but not uh, in the bottom, not bottom four. And now we're going to do Mr. Marley Scott's list right here. Starting with Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, which I've talked about before. It was it's it's my favorite Star Wars movie. Um, it was on my brother-in-law Grant's list, and we're just gonna get into it, right? <clears throat> it has the best action in any Star Wars movie. I've discussed this many times. The lightsaber battles are fantastic. There's so many memorable, quotable lines, moments, some memes even. You know, nothing wrong with some memes in your movie. Um, the transition that it has from Anakin Skywalker to Darth Vader is absolutely incredible. It's extremely well done. And it's a movie that's aged incredibly well. And the Star Wars fandom has really, really come around on it. Um, so for Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Next up we have Rocky, which this is like the fifth time I've mentioned Rocky on these videos, um, but not this one. Rocky's made an appearance already. Rocky 3 has made an appearance and Rocky 4 has made an appearance. Now we're talking about Rocky. I think this is the best movie in the Rocky franchise, although it's not my favorite movie. It is the best quality film. Um, the main reason for that for me personally is I just think Sylvester Stallone as an actor is so... Um, I think Rocky is far and away the character that he plays the best and he no one else could do it but there's just so many awkward moments to me like I know Rocky's meant to be a little dim um, and kind of a little socially awkward but there's just so many moments to me that are just so incredibly awkward that I just have a hard time watching that being said this is still a great movie um i will say there really are no better underdogs in a movie than rocky i'd say really the only one is maybe daniel larusso in the karate kid i think carl weathers is great as apollo creed the rest of the sp supporting cast uh burt young adrian panino mickey goldmill uh mickey goldmill is not the actor mickey goldmill is the character the actor's name is I don't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, Mer Meredith Burgess, Meredith Meredith Burgess, one of the Bur Burgess Meredith is the actor's name. Um, anyways, Rocky, seven out of ten. Once upon a time in Hollywood, real quick, one of my favorite movies of all time. I recently learned how much I love Quentin Tarantino. I thought I didn't like him. I've talked about this before. Then I started actually watching his movies, and I realized I just didn't like Kill Bill, which was the first of his movies I saw. But I love him as a director. All the rest of his movies are absolutely fantastic. And this is my favorite of his films. Leonardo DiCaprio is great because Leonardo DiCaprio is always great. Brad Pitt is great. Marco Robbie is great. Just a great film. Per perfect film, maybe? Mm, I don't know. But it's one of my favorites. 10 out of 10. Next up, we have Friday. We got Chris Tucker and I have in my notes Ice Cub but I know that's not his name, but we're going to call him that. An Ice Cub. They play off each other so incredibly well in this movie, um, and there are so many other iconic, great actors that appear even in some in more like cameo-type roles. you got Tiny Lister, Nia Long, John Witherspoon, Regina King, Bernie Mac. Just so many iconic, iconic comedic actors um, and just icons of the 90s. Iconic movie, all-time comedy flick. 7 out of 10 for me. Next up we have No Country for Old Men. To me, this is like the epitome of the neo-western genre, um, which if you don't know what that is, I don't know, look it up. No, neo-western is just, it, I'm sorry if I'm mansplaining here, um, but neo-western is just a western that takes place like in modern day. Um, but Javier Bardem is 
best role of his career here as Anton Chigurh. He is such such a versatile actor. I feel like he's different in every single thing that he's in. Um, and apparently, I read an article that psychiatrists say that Anton Chigurh is the most accurate film depiction of a sociopath, which is really scary because he's a scary dude. Um, Josh Brolin is really great in his role. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones, I feel like really didn't have as much screen time as you would think, but he's great in this movie as well. 8 out of 10 for No Country for Old Men. Just a great film. The Godfather. I feel like I'm kind of flying through these. I'm only five minutes in and I've already talked about like four movies. Um, anyways, The Godfather. So I've just recently watched The Godfather for the first time. Like it was earlier this year. It was for this poster right here. It's one of these first ones right here. I think like maybe this one right here is The Godfather. Um, and I'll say that I didn't love it as much as some people do. I think that my expectations for it were so high because like it's The Godfather. Everyone always talks about it. Um, and I can understand why it's so universally praised. I felt like I was maybe just disappointed, but that's not the movie's fault. That's that's my own. No, I don't know if that's my fault because everybody talks about The Godfather all the time. I should have had those expectations, but I'm not going to fault the movie for that. I don't think it's a bad movie by any means. It's just not one of my personal favorites. Um, the acting is obviously great. Marlon Brando, um, Al Pacino, uh, Robert Duvall, uh whom I know I'm missing like extremely important actors right now, but I'm just having a hard time thinking. Obviously, this is an incredibly well-made film by Mrs. F Mr. Francis Ford Coppola, and I'm going to give The Godfather an 8 out of 10. The Land Before Time. So, he was, bro was really trying to make me cry with this one. Marley was trying to make me cry here. Um, this movie is animated so distinctly um it's aged very well for a movie that came out i think in the 80s um so it's like 40 years old the fact that the colors of the characters and there's if you watch closely in their surroundings they change depending on a variety of factors the lighting the weather it's honestly very it's pretty cool it's kind of compelling um but this is a really sad movie the spoilers, the death of Little Foot's mother is one of the saddest animated deaths for sure. Maybe deaths at all. It's so hard to watch. It's really sad. You know, this is one of those movies. I talked about this in my last video. How many movies have changed like now watching them as a dad. And this is one of those ones that it's just so sad seeing that little guy by himself. Oh my gosh. But seeing him gain this new family along the way. As the film progresses, it's just beautiful, really heartwarming. 7 out of 10 for The Land Before Time. Marley and me. And he sent he sent me his list. He said, Marley and me, parentheses, I guess. So, ha! I get the joke. Good one. No, this is a uh, good quality family movie, which is something I talked about with Secondhand Lions in my last video. Is I think there's a family movie. It's kind of its own genre. Like, you have... You're going to have different things. You're going to have comedies, dramas, whatever, animated movies, whatever. But family movie is like its own genre. And this, to me, is one of the epitomes of that genre. Um, it is has the ultimate, consistent, tear-jerking cliche that any movie can do with the dead dog, right? But you know what? Gets me every time. And I think that this is one of the best uh, examples of the family dog movies. Um, I think that it is top two aside Hachi, A Dog's Tale. Those are also definitely the most, the two saddest, right? Those are just, it's just there's something so sad about seeing a dog die, like in real life and in movies. That's just like, I don't know, it's just different than when a person dies. Obviously when a person dies, that's still sad. But like when a dog dies, they're just, they're always so innocent. You know, well, we don't deserve dogs. I miss my dog, Sam. That's what that just made me realize. I'm about to cry right now. This is crazy. Anyway, it's a relatable film because these kids grew up with this dog and then they had to lose him, right? So, you know, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. I feel like I'm giving it a good amount of praise to give it a 7, but that's because it makes me mad because it makes me sad. Yeah, anyways. 
Zoolander. <laughs> Very different movie. Does not make me sad. Um, ben Stiller acts and directs this film very well, but to me, Owen Wilson as Hansel is the standout here. His comedic timing is great. Um, this is definitely not my favorite performance for Mr. Uh, my fellow Wilson, Mr. Owen here. That would definitely be Lightning McQueen. ka -chow. Um But I think this is probably his funniest performance. Um, there are very, very many iconic and quotable lines and scenes. There's a lot of cameos from famous people in this one, and I saw it in the second one. I haven't seen it, but apparently there's even more. I think for me, the tea drinking scene and the dialogue in it stands out specifically as I was cracking up the whole time. And I will say that the gag of um, Hansel and Derek putting on disguises and then it just being two completely different actors of completely different races probably not pc but i think it's a good funny gag you know and i i think it's harmless at the end of the day um uh, maybe i'm wrong but okay I, I probably shouldn't have gone into this seven and a half out of ten for zoolander we're just gonna change gears here to something that's not controversial at all which is my surprise of the list the crocodile hunter collision course which uh, i should have known that marley was going to have on here that man loves steve Irwin. this is a picture of marley and steve right here this is i know exactly which picture i'm going to put so i'm going to describe it this is uh marley on his one year anniversary of getting steve so steve's one year birthday now steve is like this big he's a big tortoise now we love steve and he's named after steve Irwin. steve's like our friend group mascot no dalen is our friend group mascot but steve is like our emblem anyways I remember vaguely seeing this kid as a movie, maybe seeing this kid as a movie, seeing this movie as a kid. I remember certain parts of it, but this definitely felt like a new, fresh experience watching it. Let me say this. I'm not sure that I've had as much fun watching a movie as I did with this one. Um, I watched it split up on my lunch break in two different two different days, but it's just like, I was sitting there on my phone just grinning. It was so fun. It's such a fun movie, right? Uh, I think the last time I had that much fun watching a movie was when I saw Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem last year in theaters. Um, just because that, that's one of my favorite movies ever. And this now is one of my favorite movies. It's so, so fun. It's fun for all ages too, I think. And I think the concept of there's this whole storyline, this whole subplot going on about the government and they're they're looking for a piece of a satellite and it was swallowed by a croc and then there's also this lady that that was trying to kill the croc and then oh, she's having to deal with another side of the government but, and meanwhile steve Irwin's just doing an episode of his show right he's unbothered by it all i think it was a brilliant choice and the right choice to not have him acting but just having him be steve Irwin, right he's just doing his thing rest in peace to that guy right <laughs> Gosh, freaking stingrays. Um, the fact that all this is going on, and meanwhile, he's just talking to the camera. The camera's right here. I pointed over here because this is where I am on my phone. Talking to the camera, right? And he's just talking about all these different animals. And it's just so, so brilliant. The fact that he just thinks that they're poachers coming after this croc, and he's trying to save this croc. It's awesome. I love it. And I think for what it is, it's perfect. And I'm going to give it maybe controversial. But you know what? If Steve Irwin is controversial to you, I don't know. Just maybe try to smile a little more. 10 out of 10 for this movie right here, which brings Marley's total to an 81 and a half out of 100, which puts him right above Aaron on the total list. Um, I don't know what the spot is overall, but it's kind of towards the middle there, a little bit behind Edmund and Hayden, who have the 83 and a half. Um, so. Shout out to you, Mr. Marley Scott, for putting this list together. Um, I appreciate you um, doing it, even though it took you like four weeks to do it. Bro was really struggling. Bro was really struggling with this, so I appreciate him doing it. Um, and you know, thanks so much for watching this video. If you watched to this point, I appreciate you watching. Even if you didn't, you're not gonna know it because you're not gonna hear me say this. But I still appreciate you watching, even if you just watch for a little bit. Stay tuned for the next couple episodes that I'm watching the movies of right now. Um, my uh, De Destiny, my wife Destiny and I's favorite couple friends, some of our closest friends, Mr. Kyle and Amelia Major. I'm watching both of their lists kind of in tandem, kind of switching back and forth. So those videos will be coming out soon. And, you know, that's really all I got for you. Um, so thanks so much for watching. And...
Peace.